a country with over 3,000 kilometers of coastline. Its climate and its story change dramatically as one moves from north to south. On my last visit here, I hung mainly at the top of this long country, captivated by the dangerous and explosive. There was so much I missed. Aquatic gods, mysterious enterprises, garden tool weaponry, secret beaches, and an empowering story that is going to make your heart melt. Ready, set, let's ride down Vietnam. A new road less traveled begins, and in our classic style, let's go on a trip. Because travel is both an external and an internal journey. The two intertwine. Even the most unconscious souls who get on the trail will be different at the end. But certainly those of us who are open and aware can experience huge shifts in perspective. Let's go for those big shifts. On my last trip to Vietnam many moons ago, the physical journey was largely done on a tandem bicycle. And I was profoundly moved by the locals who rode along with me, <laughs> including a man whose mother fought against the Americans, including my own father. This time, the territory I plan to cover is a little bit more ambitious. So I'm gonna need a different type of vehicle. I'm starting my journey back here in Hanoi. I got myself a nifty haircut. Take you back to that real quick. Yeah, buddy. Got one right on. Woo! A fresh haircut sure feels good, doesn't it? Now I'm gonna go meet my buddy Juan whose mother fought against guys like my father. The last time we met, I led Juan around on a tandem bike. This time he takes me around on his motorcycle, a much more appropriate vehicle for a city that moves around on two wheels. It's my first taste of modern traffic in Vietnam. There is some kind of order here, but it's going to take a minute for me to crack the code. Right now, it looks like traffic pandemonium. But this is how life moves in Vietnam. Juan goes on to describe the exploits of one of Vietnam's greatest generals. Is this a popular street name in, exactly. in Vietnam? Exactly. Interesting. And what, what, uh, what did this person do? One of the important person who found uh, the Lý dynasty, L-Y. Uh -huh. And that last is one of the famous last about 300 years old. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the dynasty. The last Okay. Yeah, Lee L.Y. You're so heavy. <laughs> I'm heavy? Yeah. You're skinny, dude. You yeah. need to get your wife to cook you some uh, potatoes and ox meat or something. <laughs> Juan takes me to sign after sign all legends of local history. And there's your hero. So this is the guy who defeated the Mongolians. Right. Yeah. God. It's amazing how many people the Vietnamese defeated. You heard about the Americans, the French, the Chinese, but how about the Mongolians? The Mongolians crushed everybody and they tried their same technique with the Vietnamese. They were like, surrender or else. And the Vietnamese were like, bring it on. Chun Tu Dao. Yeah. It's a great story. Yeah. After meeting with Juan, I go to Vietnam's historic Sofitel Legend Metropole Hotel, an institution in Hanoi since the era of French colonialism. A good place to soak in history, have a coffee, and contemplate my intentions for this trip. This is a very unique cup of coffee I'm about to drink. Back in 1946, a bartender working right here at the Metropole Hanoi had a conundrum. He had a lot of customers who wanted coffee with cream, but there was a milk shortage in the city. 
and he came up with a very interesting solution. He used egg yolks. It sounds like it wouldn't work, but check this coffee out. It really does work. Look at that. Egg, condensed milk, hazelnut liqueur, and of course, Vietnamese drip coffee. It looks like a damn good cup of coffee, right? Well, let me tell you something. That is a damn good cup of coffee. Mm. I've been thinking about what Juan showed me in the streets and I'm formulating a little bit of an idea. Check this out. This is a line from a 15th century poem, probably the most famous poem in all of Vietnam. We have sometimes been weak and sometimes powerful, but at no time have we suffered from a lack of heroes. Vietnam is a country of heroes. Street signs, the monuments, the statues, even the biggest city named after heroes. Now that there are no Americans, no French, no Chinese to defeat, how is heroism appearing today? And if we put that filter on during our journey and we look through that lens, what can we learn about the whole concept of heroism in general? What does it mean to be a hero today? Let's give that a shot and see what we discover. Before I leave the hotel, I snag their in-house historian to show me something pretty cool right underneath the property. Wow. How did you feel when you were in that bomb shelter with the other people? Uh, actually, I just a little bit scary. We stayed there for just about each time about fifteen minutes something. Okay. Yeah. And did you feel the people around you were becoming uh, less energized about this, like they were moving towards defeat, or was it the opposite feeling? I think there's a kind of the opposite feeling. It seems to me that um, there's no, no fear mm. in their face. And they seem to be uh, like uh, becoming a little bit more and more strengthened. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting because the bombings are designed to demoralize. Right. But right. it had the opposite effect. Exactly. Through this way? Yeah, uh, right. I haven't even got on the bike yet, and I think we've already uncovered one layer of heroism in this bunker. Now a hero has a vision, a plan, and as he or she goes to make that happen, they're gonna come under resistance, just like the Vietnamese did. How many of us have dreams and goals, and as soon as we get some resistance, we cave? But these guys stuck with it years in these bomb shelters, and what did they get for their efforts? An independent, free country. They got self-control, self-autonomy. So I think there is a lesson here to be learned in these dank, dark bunkers. The more you stick with something, the more your resolve grows, not the opposite, and the closer you're getting to your goal. Right on, let's go look for the next lesson. I leave the underground for now, although soon I shall return. Now that I have my hero quest, I need a ride to get me down the coast. So many options. Oh yeah, this is more my speed. Right on, a lot more versatile. I like the body and the style, maybe a skosh more power and we've got our bike. Okay, now that I have my adventure bike, I've got to start off my ride with something that's quite challenging. Honestly, my bike skills are rusty, 
and I haven't been on one since Cyprus last year. This is Cyprus. This is Hanoi. Driving out of Hanoi.